Hello again, one and all. It's Pipes here, checking back in. Uh, it's been quite a while since I did a development video, and this is the third one uh, in this series that I'm currently making for the portfolio to try and get in a respected studio. I've been doing some um, freelance work uh, previously, so that's why there's been a bit of a delay. And also with the GDC, Game Developers Conference, a lot of... Uh, uh, the engines have changed quite a bit now and offering monthly subscriptions and low royalty fees and everything so there's quite a bit of indie development going on at the moment um, with that I'm actually moving engines from the cry engine which is still I think is a, an amazing engine fabulous engine um, but I need to start looking for my own career development at Unreal Engine 4 and also the physical based lighting model and start texturing in that in that style. Uh, also, I'm waiting for Quixel's um, suite to come out, which includes the new Endu, Dedu, and the Mega Scans. Can't wait for those. And I'm going to be really looking at the physical base lighting from this point. And I didn't want to wait for the new CryEngine to come out, which incorporates that. So I've decided to transition onto Unreal engine. Um, like I say, CryEngine's awesome. It really is a brilliant engine. But looking at some of the tutorials uh, that Zach Parrish has done at Epic, um, it's too tempting not to, to learn and get involved. I did actually use the Unreal Engine when I was at university doing one of my very first projects. Um, and Zach Parrish then, the, the tutorial guy, he um, did the tutorials then for, for the UDK engine when it first came out. Uh, he's, he's just awesome. So, um, yeah, moving on to the Unreal. So, these are sort of the last kind of screenshots I'll be doing from the Cry Engine. What I was doing when we last was looking at this was finishing off that Viaduct pub, which is now complete, as you can see here. It's, it's lit. Um, it might take a few more. Uh, action shots uh, with the lighting going back to the old cry engine so that kind of shows the old way of texturing before we started to look at this PBL way of texturing. Um, I was working just before the GDC also on, on the scene looking at doing um, the park area across the road which in the end turned out to be kind of like a cemetery instead. Um, I thought it had more interest so these are some of the sculpts that I was making that's the low poly of just the generic uh, cemetery stone. Uh, Mayor ZBrush X Normal and Photoshop. It's like a memorial column, that one. Um, also, this one um, with the a sculpt that I created in ZBrush. This is actually the low poly. Um, this, was, this is quite a, a large cemetery piece. Um, the large stone that would go into there, so it's quite an important focal point. Um, these were the modular park walls, now cemetery gates, that are going to be there. So quite quite a bit um, being made for the cemetery. I made a lot of trees and things, but then I did a little bit of freelance work, but now I'm back on this um, pretty much 100%. So what I'm doing at the moment now is looking at doing the interior of the viaduct pub and doing mainly the the main the main part of the the bar area and also going down into the cellar and then what I was thinking was could have kind of like a, a hole in the cellar wall where the the sneak where they sneak across underneath the street and then across into the cemetery but from this point on it will all be created in the unreal engine so the cemetery I'm not continued that in cry engine I'll be looking to create that in Unreal 4. So it'll be kind of like a transition between um, this outdoor shot and then we'll be inside the pub and then if you can imagine a camera going down the stairs into the cellar and then through a tunnel under the road into the sewer and then up through um, kind of like a sewer grate into the cemetery area. So there's quite a bit of work to be done but what I've been doing so far is blocking out the the pub itself. First things first though, getting as much reference as possible. So um, I've been looking on Google Image, uh, might have popped for a couple of beers, uh, just to have a look at sort of like the architecture of the pubs, how things are laid out in a, in a British pub. Um, as you can see, I've just gone through stools at the bars. I like the the oak there and the oak panelling around the side and the wallpaper. 
Um, I like the cream look as well. I like this kind of reddish tones to it, especially if we get a few lights flickering in there and uh, sort of like the, the light coming through the windows on the left hand side. So yeah, just looking at bar stools. Uh, it's so important to look at as grab as much reference as possible, even if it's just small pieces, like even like latches on windows or anything. Just you've got to look at reference. It, the piece might be your own, but you really have got to look closely at all the details within the real world. So I like these kind of like booths with the the oak paneling. That the, the problem with this pub is what that I've laid out is quite small, so. It would be kind of like an old, an old tavern type feel. So it wouldn't be um, incorporating lots of lots of these booths. Uh, I'll show you in the block out. Um, kind of like the dartboard area, lots of paintings, lights. Um, I've got. I kind of like the idea of maybe stucco ceiling with wooden beams going over the top. And again, looking at sort of like the the chairs, the benches. Um, making decisions, the copper bar that goes across there, how the actual back is also created, sort of like how it, how things are stacked on shelves. It really is just looking at absolutely everything you can, even sort of like where the vents might be, plug sockets, everything. It's it's all about the details, really is. I think that's what's so important when you're making a piece of work. It's all about the details. Um, I've had quite a few requests uh, asking about the assets that I've created. Are they really high poly? Are they low poly? What's what's the process of going through things? So what I'll show you is, that's quite nice, I like this. This is going to look good in the physical base lighting actually on this bar. Kind of like some stains um, in the in the roughness and the the reflections, I like the reflection captures that they've got in UE4, that's really cool. Um, yeah, so it shouldn't actually take that long to texture this bar because with the Unreal 4 engine we can create sort of like base chrome copper wood and then use that as an instance and then just add details on from there. So a lot of this will be like a tiling texture of wooden panels, tiling texture of brass, and then just overlaying that onto assets and just changing them slightly, adding more dirt and grime where required. Uh, I like the carpet, I like the wood, uh, the idea of having wood around where the bar is. Um, yeah, so just lots and lots of reference. So this is how far I've got at the moment. So, I've brought in a an asset. I found this on a royalty free um, character three D character site. Um, so, I'm I'm not really into making characters. I don't mind it, but I'm I'm mainly into environments and texturing. So, I'm not really looking at doing a lot of characters in my portfolio. So, I'll take this character because it's royalty free. Um, I can pose him in the pub and um, find a few others and do the same. Could change the texture slightly on the shirt and make him more like a like a fat landlord, um, which should be cool. A rotund landlord, yes. I think that's a better word for it. So, right. So, the way that I go about something like this is we've got the outer shell with the normals reversed um, of the shape of the pub that it was in the actual CryEngine scene. Um, so everything should be exactly the same. Um, we've got the windows in the same place. Also, um, on the uh, pub itself, the CryEngine pub, the, the ceiling goes down to there. Well, this would be kind of like a toilets area, split off into female, male. Um, but I'm not going to go into there, um, time restraints and everything. What I was thinking of doing is, you come into this kind of back area, that's the landlord's uh, door up to, well this door would take him up to the upstairs room where he would live and this takes you down to the cellar. So at the moment I've just blocked it out to this point so there'll be some cellar steps going down there. It might even go as far as to sort of like this point here and then because it'll be underneath um, we'll just block it out underneath, lots of barrels, lots of empty crates and everything. And then across that side, underneath here, across there, will be the kind of like hole in the wall where they've made a tunnel. That would then go across the street 
to the cemetery here. So that's the plan. That's the the grand scheme of things. But at the moment, what I'm doing is, um, after looking at all the reference, taking as much uh, information as I possibly can, um, start making modular pieces. So this is a modular piece here. So we've got the chrome bar across there, the wooden panelling, the chrome bar at the bottom, uh, drip trays. Now I'm only going to create uh, one or two variants of like the drip trays. That would be sort of like the the modular pieces that will go in Unreal. But obviously the the texturing will be the wooden panelling, and using mesh paint we can put in scratches and grime and things like that uh, on each of these selected pieces. The great thing is with the mesh paint is kind of like vertex painting that you'd normally do in CryEngine. In mesh paint you can actually do it in the Unreal Engine real time. Now, if for example I create this piece here and then in Unreal I make a, an instance of it, I can, even though that's an instance and doesn't cost, this can be vertex painted differently from this one, even though it's kind of just a child of that one. So that, that's going to be great. So we can layer up quite a few materials um, and then give quite, quite a lot of variation to it. Same here, we've got, uh, I've kind of did a bit of colour coding. I'm thinking of having the carpet going round here where it's getting threadbare, where there's most traffic of people walking in and out and perhaps a bit of damp and stuff and it's going threadbare and you can see the wooden floorboards underneath. So we've got three textures there. We'd have kind of like grime, the uh, the carpet, then the threadbare, actually four um, with the underlying um, planks of wood. So this would be kind of wood that's scratched and dirty like it would be in a bar after all that use the carpet going around um, the dartboard which I've already made a dartboard that was in the the back area of the pub so I can grab that and bring that in here and then just clean it up a little we've got these lights again the reference for the lights so we've got this one here and if I bring up the I've got some reference there we go so that's the reference for these lights, just grab these to one side. Um, obviously, trying to keep it low poly as if it was going to be for a game engine. Uh, it's pretty close. Um, could extend those up a little more, um, but I, I don't really want to put too many polygons into things. Um, it's all about getting as much as we can out of the normal map, especially when the new Endu 2 comes out, where it's got the um, the painting, the the mesh, the, not mesh painting. It's I think it's called multi sculpting, and then do two, so you can go in and use all the Photoshop tools to paint your normals. So as well as using ZBrush, also using that, it's um, it's going to be quite a quick and powerful way of doing some nice designs on things. Same with these tables. Um, even got the the coin there, which would tell you the table number for food. It's all about the small details, as many small details as you can. This is an asset that I created quite a while ago. Uh, that's actually Half-Life 2, one of the concept shops. That shows you how long ago it was. So I'll be using that, obviously changing the internal of that. Because it was the viaduct pub with the, the train going over the top of the viaduct, I'm going to kind of give it that train um, sort of theme. There'll be a theme to like the trains and things like that, because you'll find a lot of the British bars, if they're near like train stations or whatever, will have train memorabilia in it, or if it's near something else, it'll have that kind of memorabilia. Uh, again, we've got the circular tables, need to put the coins on there just to show the table numbers. And uh, the the reason is, um, I'll only be bringing such as like one or two of these in, different variants, but I like to lay it out in um, Maya so I can get a feel for how things are going to look, what sort of what table placements would be. You don't have to do that, you could just make sort of like one chair, one table, um, and then put them into Unreal, and then assemble it there. But I kind of like to see this... The, the, early, the early stages of it, and how it would lay out, and the composition of how how we want it to be laid out and then when we come to the back area even though you might not see many things there are like switches for turning on the the lager flow and then these pumps there still need to put shields on the front to show what type of beer it is the name of the beer or make up some fictional beers um again this could be like cider cast cider uh, with the drip trays this will be tiled floor down here and these will be non-slip mats thinking here to have a sink um, with sort of like um, a 
cloth and a rag and everything. Um, I mean, everything is, is thought out, planned, and it's all come from reference and from going for a beer, which is pretty pretty nice a nice guinness um this back piece here i'm thinking of having this part here as a mirror with the name of the pub like they like they would have uh, optics coming off of this uh, wooden wooden kind of baseboard here um also shells with other various liquors uh, a telephone i'm thinking of having a telephone there uh, ice buckets the cash register perhaps here we've got these cupboards some of them can be slightly open um, and these would be the refrigerators perhaps oak panelled fascias on the front but these are actually uh, refrigerators inside there that's why I've got these these doors here again we've got the swing top bar where you can walk through and that's the door piece there so it's all just planned out block it all out first try and do the geometry as clean as possible um, I mean, I could take even more polys out of there, but we're looking at Unreal 4 engine now, guys, so it's sort of like, come on, we can start throwing a few more polys at it, surely. Especially when we're doing a small interior scene like this, because you could just stream this level in, so you could really go to town on that. Um, so, yeah, that's where I am at the moment. So what I'm going to do this time is, whenever I get to, like, a landmark, such as I'm thinking of doing some concept painting of how how I think it might look with the different colour variations um, I'll show you that and I'll try and go through each stage of blocking out and creating this pub area in the Unreal Engine 4 um, as quickly as I can obviously for time restraints because um, as I say I'm looking to try and get into a respected studio again getting a bit fed up with freelance now um, and we'll we'll see how it goes from there. And if you have any questions or queries, just give me a give me a shout. Send me a message on YouTube. Uh, try and get some people to subscribe to me. That would be cool. Also, my website's at www.rpiper.co.uk. And um, I hope to see you all again soon. And uh, the next landmark, I'll I'll show you how I did that. So have a great time, guys. Uh, enjoy doing your own modeling, your own texturing, and. Um, Put 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 your uh, portfolio sites in the comments as well. I'd love to have a look at them and see what we're all doing. Uh, that's the gr great thing about 3D and texture community. It's awesome. Everyone helps each other and uh, having a great time doing it. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, keep it real. Clocking off. Thank you. Goodbye.